ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast. This is, of course, the Georgia Indie Talks episode uh, here exclusive on YouTube and, you know, on our, <clears throat> excuse me, Patreon. So we always tell you to make sure you're subscribing to one of those two if you're the big Indie Talk person. Yes, it's definitely. not available on the podcast platforms anymore, only available on YouTube. Subscribe, turn that little notification on so you'll know now when the new Georgia Indie Talk segments. Because guess what, Myron? It's not going to be every week. So some weeks will be there, some weeks it won't. Um, if it's something really small, we might tack it onto the main show. Uh, but so that's kind of why it's like, look, it's going to be just on but YouTube. But it's huge. It's huge this time. If, this week, man, there's tons to go over <laughs> between stuff from last week, stuff coming up this week, and stuff down the road even, man. Uh, lots and lots of stuff to go through. Um, so listen, anything you want to say before we get started? Because this is going to be a roller coaster, man. we got a lot of stuff to ride through. I enjoyed last weekend so damn much. Yeah. And, uh, you know, let, you know, let's start in the best place, right, man? Southern Honor, we were up at Canton. They did their big free show. Uh, the card was still loaded, man. Everybody thought maybe yeah. they would, like, skimp a little bit, you know, when they came to saving that money, you know, since they were going to do. Did lots of cool things, by the way. Uh, I love the fact that they had the donation thing. Uh, helped uh, Ox out as well. Yeah. Look, Ox has supplied rings. He has done lots of, you know, stuff around the entire state. Uh, we appreciate Ox. We love him to death. Uh, he's, yeah. he's always a blast to sit and talk to. Um, as Gary pointed out, like if you can understand him right now, we, <laughs> he's always a blast. Uh, but you know, I'm glad they did that to help him out amongst many other things they were doing up there. Uh, but listen, man, tons of stuff went down. First of all, a two hour show yes. ran like a clock, man. It was like, boom. Yeah. And then we were out of there. How, uh, about the, how about the fact that it was a completely different audience almost than what normally shows up for Southern Honor? Yeah, that was a little weird that, you know, it was like there were new people there we had never seen before. Um, I've only seen that happen in that building one other time, and we'll get into that. But, you know, uh, but yeah, it was a whole new different, just there were people from like West Georgia that were there. It was a whole, you know, uh, had a kids. huge, you know, yeah, lots of kids and families. I mean, it was spring break. Um, so I think that had a lot to do with it. But, uh, I mean, just lots and lots of stuff to go over from that show specifically. Um one being, I guess it was like card subject to change, right? That was the the biggest news coming out of that yeah. whole show, man. Yeah, that was a very changed show. Um, you wound up getting a really good show out of it, okay? Uh, you wound up getting a really solid, enjoyable show. Uh, you started out with Carl, Carly Bravo versus Nodgicism. Uh Nodgicism is always entertaining to watch. Uh you know, anytime he's on a card, you're going to guarantee you're going to get the most exciting match on the card. Uh, it started out real well with a good match, and people got into the show right there. Yeah. I think Carly Bravo's is establishing himself as a player, like, everywhere he goes. Yes. Um, and I think that's why you start off him off there. Uh, and then, of course, you steamrolled into Kingsley Hawkins. You know, they have a really good match. Um, but can Adrian Hawkins have a bad match? No. I, yeah, I don't think so. Um, you know, Kingsley again, of course, is you know, he's the another young guy they're building into, I think, a star, you know, down the road. Uh, you know, so that's kind of the I think we're heading down the right path with Kingsley. Um, I know they had the audible out of the story they were with with Kevin Ryan. Um, yeah. which kind of could be <laughs> it's funny. Uh, one of the running jokes is I got a text from somebody saying, Call SHW 38, the audible, like the entire show yeah. was like that was it. Um, because, you know, Nick Halen and, My and Michael Judas wrestled in the next match. It was supposed to be Chip and Nick Halen, which because I hyped it all last week, right? Nick Halen was on his, you know, his tour to prove he was the best wrestler in Georgia. He was going to wrestle Chip Day and then Sal, which we'll talk about in a minute, at Anarchy. And uh, it ended up being him versus Judas, who, unfortunately, it probably didn't go the way Nick Halen wanted it to. Still a pretty good match. Looked yeah, good in a losing match. effort. That is true. Yes. But right now, that. Judas is out to prove a point at Southern Honor. Uh -huh. So I'm not really sure. There's not, there's only a few guys, and we'll get to who one of those guys is going to be here shortly, that is going to be able to stop a motivated Judah, Judas when he's getting on a roll. Yeah. There's, they're few and far between the men that can stop stop him. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Speaking of somebody not being able to be stopped, it looks like Tank can't be stopped. Um, oh. Like the attack on Gunnar Miller, they were supposed to have an actual wrestling match, not 
you know, death match and anything. Like how are they going to, how they fix this? What's going on? Gunner was brutalized. Yeah. You, you know, cause we're old school. We like, you know, like, Hey, there's only one next step for it to go. Uh, I think they'll probably go accelerate past that part for me. They'll probably go straight to, you know, tank style of match to get a rematch uh, versus gunner style match, which is what this one was supposed to be. Uh, but clearly did not go down that way. Um, so I think we're going to see this feud elevate to the next level, and we'll see that over the oh, next coming, the few God. weeks, uh, if that happens at the next show. Um, wow. Joe Black yeah. didn't have an opponent because his opponent, of course, didn't you know didn't make the show. Hence the the audible we talk about. Uh, but you know, there's always somebody willing to step up to the plate, right? To take take to take on a challenge. Yeah, man. And, uh, you know, our guy, Proc the Croc Johnson, love him, hate him, you know, depending on where what building he's in. That sounds familiar with that group. Um, <laughs> so, but him and, you know, Proc and Joe went toe-to-toe, man. And uh, They um, smashed. Yeah. It was good. It was violent. It was right in your face. It was, yeah, hoss fight type thing. Loved it. Loved it. You got to see all that, all that damn hitting and stuff. I love that. Yeah. Um, it's one of those things where it's not the first time they faced each other. Uh-huh. Um, but what I think happens is we always talk about guys when they face somebody like Joe. It's your opportunity to do one of two things. You're either going to prove to the world you don't belong or you're going to prove mm-hmm. that you do belong on that stage. Win, lose, or draw, it, you can still do it. And I think yeah. at the core... <coughs> I think Prot Johnson proves yes. he belongs at that level. And, uh, you know, I think it's a lot to be proud of. And I think it's also probably not the last time we see these two face each other. And I am, I am very happy about that. Yes. A hundred percent. Um, now the next match, you know, we went through, look, I, the audible changed. There's, there's so many moving parts to this that I don't necessarily love how we got to where we got to let me, and I'm being fully, you know, full, completely honest about it. But I love the fact that all-star special holds more gold. Now they are the Southern honor yeah. tag team champions. Look, chip getting hurt, not being able to compete, putting Kyle in a situation where he had to compete by himself to the credit all-star special act. You know, they, they appear, they didn't want to win that way. They were going to make, Hey, let's do this later. Kyle being look, Kudos in all respect to Kyle Matthews for saying, yeah. look, we're having a match. We're going to finish the match. And I, if I have to do it by myself, so be it. Um, now, sometimes discretion is the better part of valor. Uh, sometimes if, if they're going to let you off the hook, maybe take that <laughs> um, and come back and fight another day. But kudos for him for not. And, uh, you know, of course, being shorthanded, he came up in a loss against the All-Star Special and, of course, now Hanson and Huck are your new Southern Honor Tag Team Champions. Listen, I know a lot of people are like, hey, we don't like how we got here. I have a gut feeling Kyle and Chip are going to have their day and get their rematch down the yeah. road. Yeah. So that's just my take on it. So don't – look, it's wrestling. It's it's grown-up stuff. It's, you know, stuff will happen, and they'll get their chance to get their belts back. I, that's just my opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the main event, of course, was Cyrus the Destroyer versus Owen Knight for the Southern Honor Championship. Thoughts on that uh, match, man? Another really good big man, smaller man match. Uh, Owen did very well for himself. Uh, Cyrus is so dominating. Uh, Cyrus would have had the win, in my opinion, had it not been interfered with. Uh, Judas came out, interfered with the match, stopped Cyrus's title dreams. Uh, busted Cyrus open with a chair. Apparently, we're going to see something here. I want to see a, 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 a big, big collision between Cyrus and Jeter at some point. And honestly, Judas. I couldn't... <laughs> sorry, Judas. I couldn't be happier about it. I couldn't be happier about that. Yeah, that's, this, that's grown man shit. Let's always tell people, yeah. like, when you see stuff like that, that's the kind of stuff, again... You know, there's a, the old school fan in me loves when you have two monsters, two giants. Um, you know, look, there was a reason those two were in a match. That hell freeze is over. Mm-hmm. Like, huge fans of both of those guys. Yeah. Uh, but I will say that I am really looking forward to those two clashing one-on-one. Yes. Um, 
you know, hey, I, I had a part of me that thought like, maybe, maybe Cyrus picks up the win and it's for a belt, it's for the championship, uh, but not so much, you know. Um, so all of those roads, look, we got, you know, we got through the audible, right? And they did yeah. well. It's one of those things I told you, they did really yeah, yeah. well. Um, yeah. Even t- sometimes, you know, you just have to make the best of what you're given on a given night. And I think they did that with over 600 people in the crowd. Uh, they, I think they set the table really nice. And we're heading to their next show, which I believe is May 6th. May 6th. Uh, yes. Yeah, up in Canton. So really excited about where they're <laughs> heading. So keep an eye out. You know, of course, we're, we'll give you a little bit of a, you know, preview of that show as it gets closer and closer. Uh, but let's move on to our next show <laughs> that we sat through because that was on a Friday. So then on Saturday, oh. we headed up to Anarchy Wrestling Hardcore Hill Night 2. We missed Night 1 because we were at Southern Honor. But Night 2 we caught, which was the Anarchy uh, oh. show there. Wow. Dude, okay, I get it. People are you know can say what they want about you know the draw, the crowd size, whatever. That building was bananas loud. Yeah, it's it's the strangest thing. When you walk through the doors of Landmark Arena, it's like you suspend all disbelief upon entering and you go into a place where wrestling is real and those people are rabid. And it's like the crowd is like one rabid animal that just reacts as a whole. And it is so entrancing to watch the way wrestling gets over there, guys. It is a beautiful place. Uh, it's something special. And this show was on fire. Uh, hardcore hell lived up to the name. Uh, it was insane. Uh, I thought it was probably one of the best shows I've seen in a long time. Uh, I think people are going to be talking about this show for a while. Uh, the first match was all heat, and you got you got you got it delivered, man. The show delivered, the whole show delivered from start to finish. Uh, there was an ex- an extensive uh, intermission so to get the cage up because getting the cage up without ring ropes apparently is much harder than getting it up with ring ropes because yeah. there's nothing to stand on. Right. So took them a while to get a cage up. Nobody left. Everybody was still in attendance. Uh, even the energy didn't drop off. Right. Uh, they. This was a fire. It was a fire the whole show. Um, my hat's off to Matt Hankins for booking this thing. There, lots uh, of stuff. And they started off hot, like you said, with that tag team championship match right off the mm-hmm. gate. That surprised me a little bit. But didn't disappoint. Because, I mean, what I mean by that is yeah. they went. It, the crowd was like bananas hot. Um, and it, it's a twofold compliment. On one hand, they love the undeniable and Matt Hankins. Yes. Two, they absolutely hate the program. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, it, Proc the Croc Johnson, Hunter James are tag team champions with the coach Scott Mason. Listen, again, that crew, it's one of those in hindsight you say, look, they lost gold. Mm-hmm but you can see they're special like because of the reaction they yeah. get. So yes. will they be back? Will they be, will they come back and try to get these, you know, get their titles back a hundred percent. But it clearly, like I said, you know, them trying, you know, James and uh, Johnston trying to get their titles back is going to be a, one of some of the least of their problems because cruel makes a surprise appearance. And nobody saw this. Coming. I did not see this coming. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So you have a, this big ladder match. The night before, Austin uh, Towers had won uh, a battle royal to get into this ladder match for a title shot at the uh, TV title, which is going to be retired. Fox TV title. They're going to, what was the new name of the title? I can't remember. They haven't remember. said it yet. That's what they're going to announce okay. it at that night. Yeah. <clears throat> Rarely have I seen a ladder match in independent wrestling work as good as this one. Uh, lots of moving parts. Super well executed, heat spots, a lot of flops where people got hurt on the ladder. You know, um, <clears throat> it, this was an amazingly well done match with Cruel winning. Um, everybody in the match got to show off. Okay, uh, Jay Too Strong is such a good chicken shit heel. Oh my God, he did a wonderful job. He's money. He's money. Hated in that building. Yeah. Hated. I love how I love how every match there's except for the next one, someone was hated. 
someone was it was just bad guys yeah. and good guys and that makes strong feelings and the ladder match went off perfectly i loved it I, uh i was surprised no, you know, <laughs> yes, here's I was the thing very surprised. let me back up i wasn't surprised because once you saw him in the match you're like okay who's gonna yes. beat cruel uh yes. but it was like okay but we haven't seen him and now he's winning and now it goes back to what I said a minute ago when getting their tag team championships back when it comes to the program is the least of their problems because now Proc the Croc Johnson has to defend, you know, essentially defend. They're, they're retiring the TV title that he has for this new championship and he's got to face Cruel at the next show for that championship. Holy shit. Oh, like that's, that's money. That's looks like one obstacle after another that the program has to face. <laughs> Um, you know, and I'm going to skip a little bit out of the notes here because also the same show, Joe Black wrestles Scott Mason in a dog collar match for the Landmark Heritage Championship, which was, a, you know, he was trying to, when I say he, uh, Scott Mason was attempting to get his baby back, as he calls it, that Heritage Championship. Listen, Joe Black is Joe Black. We know who he is at this point. Like, Joe Black is one of the best wrestlers in the state of Georgia. It's, you know, and we, that's not debatable. Like, we know. I met a completely different Scott Mason, though. That was where I was going. He, like, had, you had a perception of, you know, the chicken shit Scott Mason, right? That, you know, that just, that he would sneak a dude to there. He went in there and he actually, like, at the end of the, I was like, I actually felt like Scott Mason went toe to toe with Joe Black in that dog collar match. Yes. And, you know, say what you want. I was like, kudos and mad respect for, you know, to Scott Mason. He did a good yeah. job pulling that off. Yeah. I was very impressed with his performance on that match. A lot of times it comes back to you can gain respect in a loss in pro wrestling. And I feel like yes. that's exactly what he did. Yes. Gaining respect in a win of course, is what Nick Halen accomplished when he finally got his wishes and he got to wrestle Sal Renaro at the Landmark Arena at Hardcore Hell in a match that just was what it was. It was the standalone match, like a standout match, oh. because it was so different than everything else we saw all night. It was a, it was a violent technical match, okay? Sal with those moves where he would just manipulate the tiniest joint, <coughs> the constant submission holds. The constant var variety of holds. <coughs> Sorry for the coughing, folks. Yeah, no, I Georgia, know what you're saying. He, you understand the Georgia part. Yeah, um, I'll help you out here. He, like, <laughs> yeah, the, he, the, the technical. That was what this match was. Again, that made it stand out so much was the others. There was lots of brutality. You know, there was dog collars and there were cages and there were just weapons and all this kind of stuff. You know, and then just sheer brutality. And these two guys went in there. Improved, they're two of the best wrestlers in the state of Georgia, right? Oh like wrestling, God. technical wrestling. Beautiful to watch. Um, Nick Halen was so exhausted. You could tell. You could tell. You know, it's the way it worked. He made. He made. Th he made you look and feel like God. This guy is. It's just not going to be able to do it. He's not going to be able to do it. Sal is such a, a genius, and then he pulled it off, and it's like, oh, yay! <laughs> so beautiful. The, the accomplishment there is now that he's done what he said, I think now, you know, your commissioners and your fit, you know, your, the, the heads of the, the management of the company, you know, is it time? Like it's time to kind of say, okay, Nick Halen's ready to start. He's deserving of some title, some title shots somewhere, whether it be this new title they're creating, whether it's being, you know, the big title. I mean, but listen, you start chasing that heavyweight championship. I wouldn't chase that. Uh, yeah, because Jeter just went out facing Will Caution, and absolutely, it was brutality. Jeter I almost, decimated Will Caution. I almost knocked Larry Goodman over trying to run when they were they were coming out into the crowd. I had a flashback at the time Keith Lee fell on me uh, at a show, and so now I run the minute anyone gets within a you know, a hundred yards of me and wrestlers come outside the ring and I took off. Um, I was scared to see Jeter move through a crowd. It's like watching Moses part the red sea yeah, or a shark's fin coming at you. You can just see that, that monster of a man coming and he beat the hell out of wool caution 
to the point they had to stop the match. Yeah. He put him in a submission hold and will just, I, I, he didn't die, but he damn sure looked like he did. Oh my God. And so, yeah, so now the question becomes, like you said, it's, you know, Jeter was out to prove a point, and one could argue, right? I mean, because of everything that happened, he proved his point. So the question is now, is does Will Caution climb that mountain and come back and, you know, and, you know, seek the revenge and get his championship, what he can call it, calls his championship back? Or does Jeter just at this point run dominant because it, you start asking the question of who can stop? Jeter. Well, how do you beat him? Right. How do you beat him? You're going to put him in a, in a, in a submission hold. How do you get him in a submission hold? Yeah. You're going to stand toe to toe with him. Who can stand toe to toe with him? Uh, damn. Yeah. Um, so, you know, right now somebody has got to climb that mountain, which is Jeter as, as a, an anarchy heavyweight champion. Um, but the, look, the, the, the main event, you talked about it. They took the ropes down, they put the cage up, they, you know, tables chairs everything inside this cage cold outside it was too cold to have this match it was supposed to be outside but they moved it inside for that reason well i'm happy about that very outside it would not have been as easy to watch i wouldn't have been able to sit comfortably on my bench where i like to sit and they wouldn't have bled now folks i am the last person to ever put over a death match it is not my thing I love this match, though. It wasn't a death match. This now, is the... Now, hold on. I, I had this <laughs> I had this conversation. At one point, I leaned over to Larry and said, why do I feel like we're having two matches inside this cage at the same time? Yes. I felt like Brad, oh, Jacob Ashworth and Brad Cash faced Azrael and Hanson, the beacon, in, in this match, by the way. As Cash and Azrael were facing off, I felt like we had a death match with those two. And then I felt like Ashworth and Hanson were having a wrestling match. And I don't mean like technical wrestling, but I mean like a you brawling know, wrestling. A match. brawling wrestling the match. The kind of match you'd have in a steel cage with Correct. no ropes. It, so it was kind of ironic that I felt like, okay, my God, we're having two different matches, is what it felt like um, in there. So that's kind of only the thing I say when I contradict a little bit. You say that we didn't have a death match. Well, we kind of did. But we had the payoff match. This, this, this is the match they would have had in the Omni, you know, in the, back in the day. This, you built this feud up, you're going to pay it off. This is a payoff match. Yeah. You get blood in a payoff match in this kind of deal. This is classical wrestling booking. Uh, well, the only thing we accelerated past classic wrestling booking is then we had a flaming table. We had skewers in Crystal Rose's head as she did a spiraling thing okay. that was just amazing. By the way, kudos for her for that spiraling dive off of the top of the cage. Holy shit. Dive off the top of the cage. She comes in from, she's not even involved in the match. Dives off the top of the cage. Takes everybody out. Nina Monet comes out. Huge pop. It was a night of pops. It was just pops after pops, almost to the point the pops were nonstop. Nina Monet comes out. They get into it. She skewers Crystal Rose's head. And then Crystal Rose, what was that move? Some sort of suplex? Looked like a Northern Lights, yeah. Looks what it looked like. Okay. Crystal Rose pops up after the suplex with the damn skewer still in her head. And it's probably one of the, she had the two most amazing visuals of the night, the dive and the, the, the skewers. I'm not a skewers fan, but holy shit, that sold so damn well. Yeah. Putting, uh, putting Hanson through a, a table covered in thumbtacks. The thumbtacks blew everywhere. Like that visual a, like a, was awesome. Holy shit. I mean, they, I, I mean, they put Azrael in a flaming table. Like there was literally chairs on the table on fire. And they put him through that, and then you put Hanson through the the thumbtack table. So, I mean, very good visuals to end the match. I mean, to say the least. <coughs> um, so I was fascinated. You got what you expected, you know, in the match. But I think Hanson proving, like he's again, look again, lots of you know, in in the losses sometimes you can gain respect as far as like their you know the, the what they can pull off, and I think that's what. Hanson did pull off. Um, well, he's established you know. himself as a legitimate bad guy. Well, he's a legitimate player. I mean, up there. Yes. I mean, he's in the mix. And I think, listen, Azrael and, you know, look, I saw a social media post from Hanson. Battles are lost. 
but I have a just a gut feeling that the war is not over. So there, we're going to see more out of you know all parties that are in the beacon. So that's just you know my take on it. Um, but overall, look, anarchy, hardcore hell, more than paid off. Like I will, yeah, I will argue the fact that this day that it's it was a great show. Kudos to all the people involved, from the talents to the people behind the scenes, everything. Um, you know, and I think folks, anarchy's in a good place. Oh, it's in a phenomenal place. I I live in Gwinnett County, which is an, about an hour from, from there. I drove up there in the morning. My daughter had a uh, audition at a college around there. Drove back home, took a nap, and I'm laying in bed. And like you know, I'm sick. If you can't tell right now, I've got bronchitis. And my girlfriend was like, "You don't have to go." And I said, "I have to go. It's hardcore hell." And you know what? I had to go because yeah. it was hardcore hell. That's yeah. one of those shows. It's like the WrestleMania of Georgia. anarchy, right? It's anarchy. It's it's their WrestleMania, right? And from exactly. now on, here's the truth: two nights. Yep. You're gonna get just like Mania. You're gonna get two nights of hardcore hell, and they filled two nights. And apparently, the show from Friday night was amazing. I had, did not get to see it. I'm going to get the tape as soon as possible and go through that show. Yeah. Uh, looking forward to that. Absolutely. Uh, kudos to Anarchy. Uh, just a note for them, they are switching back to the monthly format going forward. I believe their next show is May 28th. Yeah. Put that on your calendars. You know, we'll do our best to be there, especially when now that they're going to once a month. So It's getting hot in Georgia, folks. Yeah. Um, but, hey, you're sick. You know, viruses cause you to be sick, which leads us to our next show that we're talking oh, about. God. Coming wow. up this weekend, our friends down at Viral Pro are putting on their, you know, their next event. Uh, so they sent me over a little something to kind of give Ooh, you a taste heading into it. Let me it. see. Let me see. Viral Pro Wrestling returns to Thompson, Georgia on April 16th for Undeniable. We're bringing real pro wrestling back, and we're doing it one punk at a time. The Dawsons will defend their VPW Tag Team Championships against the other guys. Wait, Adams, I hear that you want to have another rematch. You want to dance again with Gustavo. Hermano, no hay problema, you can dance all night long. So I will give you that dance, that's a baile. Wade Adams will attempt to win the VPW Outbreak Championship back from Gustavo Aguilar. I am going to take back what belongs to Wade Adams, the Outbreak Championship. And I'm taking it back if I have to crush Gustavo. The carb killer Bosworth looks to show everyone he has the best body in wrestling when he faces former WCW superstar Loney. The working team captain Owen Knight will need to be war ready against NWA's Sal Renaro. Chip Day still has a score to settle with that dude, John Davis. And in the main event, the monster Cutshaw will look to destroy the heathen cruel in one of the most violent matches in pro wrestling. A monster's ball match. Tickets turn at $10. Order online at vpwticketbutt.com or at the venue the day of the event. Viral Pro Wrestling presents Undeniable April 16th. Don't miss it. Viral Pro Wrestling. That's right, man. Wow. This weekend, April 16th, down there in Thompson, Georgia, Viral Pro is running their, big next, their next big show. Holy shit, that's a good card. Yeah, stacked card, man. You can't go wrong. Look, Cruel, Cutshaw, Monsters Ball match. What's a Monsters Balls match? Fucking crazy matches where they just break shit. You know, it's, I mean, just think about it. You just oh, saw Hardcore God. Hell. Do you need to ask? Um, then you're going to see stuff like John Davis and Chip Day. Two studs, by the way. Um, I hope Chip's healed up from last weekend. I hope that ankle's doing well because uh, he's going to need to be healthy to fight that dude. I mean, yeah. I'm just telling you because John Davis is a cool. bad son of a bitch. So, oh, yeah. uh, oh, Sal, I mean, listen, Sal's all over the state, him and Owen Knight. I bet you it's going to be a classic. Yes. Definitely. Um, Lodi Bosworth, the Dawson's are going to have the tag titles on the line. 
Wade Adams and Gustavo for the Outbreak Championship, you know, amongst other things, man. You know, we met that Gustavo fella at uh, WrestleCade. Yeah. And had a talk with him. And I was very impressed with his his psychology knowledge. Yeah. Of how he understood wrestling psychology. Uh, I, I would love to be able to get to see him work. Yeah, we saw him work at uh, or I I saw him work at um when they did a uh, championship wrestling from Atlanta. He did uh, yeah, I some work able to there. Go to that one. Yeah, yeah. So he did some cool stuff. But uh, if you know, look, cards loaded. I mean, they they, you know, they do some great stuff over there. Make sure you're heading, especially if you're on that east side over there, mm-hmm. uh, on the state. Head on down. Like I said, Chip Day, John Davis, Cruel, Sour and Aura, Owen Knight, the Dawsons, Gustavo, Wade Adams. I'm on, I mean, just the cards again stacked pretty good. Uh, make sure you're heading over there to Thompson, Georgia. Uh, I believe VPW, well, I'm trying to think if they'll be done by the time the show air. VPW.ticketbud.com. Uh, get your tickets as well. But, of course, if you don't have them by then, just go to the building and buy them right there at the door uh, and check it out, man. that's a It's a great run promotion. Got lots of you know, good, great stuff. And the talent, man. That's I think a lot of times it just comes down to just check out the talent on the show, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Definitely. Uh, but, uh, you know, the same exact night down in Monroe, our buddies over at Southern Fried are running again. You know, they opened their board doors at six o'clock, bell time seven, et cetera, on Saturday. But we had a little something special to show you from those guys just for, you know, change it up a little bit. Again, look, wrestling is so hot right now in Georgia. Oh, every week you can sit there and go like, "This is a show you don't want to miss." This is a show you don't want to miss, and you got two shows like that one night that you, I always say like both shows you don't want to miss. Um, you know, crazy stacked stuff. I mean, Jesus. listen, Happy Hot Matt, Sexton. Yeah, it's gonna is he gonna steal another belt? We just saw him get a belt at 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 in NCW. The NCW. Yeah. He got put in the Anarchy Wrestling Hall of Fame the next night. Come this Saturday night, he's going to be in a title match with David Ali. Damn. Listen, he may think he's on a like a uh, an encore tour or, you know, or like a the, his farewell tour, or whatever you want to call it. But if he keeps picking up gold along the way, he doesn't get to go away, right? He's got to no. stay and got to put those, you know, and got to defend yeah. those things. Oh. Um, but yeah, I'm really that that one's a good one. Uh, David Ali and Todd Sexton will be a really good one. So listen, undeniable, they just got Anarchy gold. <coughs> You know, tag team titles, and now they're going to be down at. They're going to have a, a match with the uh, Happy Madness for those for those down there. Um, that's a it's tough a one. House match. Yeah, it's a madhouse match. Who knows what that is? I mean, those crazy cats down there. You never ever know. So what you're telling me is, Matt Hankins, Todd Sexton, and Dylan are all involved in this particular match. No telling what's going to happen. Crazy. Sal, undeniable wow this i'm gonna i get off work at seven i'm gonna try if i'm feeling better to haul my fat ass down to monroe to see that yeah to at least get there for the main event yeah matt sells and nausicism versus uh nick halen and bobby moore southern uh you look the champs the palmetto express are going to be there jbe of course will always be there as normal uh you know jacob ashworth billy buck adrian hawkins again Southern Fried doing what Southern Fried does, drawing hot crowds there in the Boys and Girls Club there in yeah. Community Court in Monroe. Uh, make sure you get there. You know, let, you can go to their thing. You can reserve. It's all on their Facebook page. Uh, I'll try to put a link on there on on the show notes if I can. Make sure you're you know checking them out. Get your tickets and head on over there. If you don't, just get them at the door, dude. The building's huge, and you know get your tickets uh, at the it's door. Wow. Yeah. AF. Yeah. That's an understatement, man. But Southern Fried, you know, they're they're one of the hottest promotions in Georgia always for a reason. So it's definitely a show you don't want to miss. Uh, but look, at, there's a new player to the dance, and they, they were brought to my attention, and I wanted to check them out. And so they sent me a little something to say, hey, give us a look. Look, the show's June 4th. It's something new down in Albany, Georgia. 
but I at least wanted to say, hey, guys, start paying attention and give them a follow, man, over there on the Facebook. Yeah. right man new exclusive pro wrestling down in albany uh you saw all the talents on that card man you know good proc the croc johnson's featured on there caprice coleman johnny romano vari morales i mean on and on and on the card's gonna be really stacked i'm excited to see like i love it it's kind of one of the things because there's a curiosity when you see some new things coming aboard like hey are they going to be players are they going to you know or how how are they going to do uh but i like the fact that i see like they're at least starting with some good talent on the show to begin yeah, with. Yeah. Uh, so that's always promising. So absolutely. Uh, we'll probably obviously have, you know, a little more over the next couple of weeks heading into that show. Uh, but we just wanted to go ahead and get it out there, man. Check them out. Exclusive pro wrestling. That show is called octane. Uh, check it out uh, on, over on Facebook as well. Uh, and again, I'll try to tag it so you can see the page on there as well. Uh, but look, lots of cool stuff, man. I just like it. That it's, you know, look, cards are Proctor Croc Johnson, man, the stud that's moving around mm-hmm. Georgia, uh, and I think he's going to be able to draw some eyes wherever he goes. So that's a that's a positive. So yes, um, yes. You know, speaking of you know drawing eyes, we always tell you, man, the easiest way to try to draw eyes towards us is we always ask you, man, make sure you're subscribing somewhere, anywhere, mm-hmm. everywhere, uh, whether it be places like. YouTube, you know, like I said, with the Georgia Indie Talk is exclusive other than on our Patreon page. So it's not, you know, if you want to catch the regular show, the weekly Tapped Out Wrestling podcast, it is, of course, available on all the podcast platforms. So make sure you're subscribing, give us five star ratings, reviews, all that good stuff. Uh, but the key part, of course, is make sure if you just want to make sure you catch everything, patreon.com forward slash tapped out pod. If you sign up there, you just you don't miss anything because everything goes there. And uh, that's the easiest place, you know, to catch. It's a one-stop shop for all. That is the Tapped Out Wrestling Podcast. Oh, yes, definitely. So that's, that's our your best you know, place. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, but, you know, like I said, we had a huge, huge week. We knew that we could never tack that onto our regular show. Uh, and, of course, we like we like doing the Georgia stuff separate. So it kind of keeps, you know, yeah. it's very, very, very specifically short, you know, to just that audience. Uh, but, man, it was surprising to see that there's as many people that watch it out of the state that has listened to it in state, which is kind of funny. Well, people want to know what's going on down here. Yeah. So, but you know, Hey, so kudos for, you know, for, you know, we appreciate all the support where no matter where you're from again, you know, we, we make sure that we always tell you, make sure, Hey, buy a shirt, support our, you know, all the sponsors of the show. We greatly appreciate that kind of stuff. And it kind of helps us keep this thing going weekend, weekend, weekend. You can get a shirt, you can gamble, you can shave your balls, all this stuff. All supporting me and Nick. Exactly. So, you know, you got many, many ways that you can support us, right? So make sure you're doing it somewhere. But uh, you got anything else before we get out of here, man? Oh, no, man. Except I'm going to the doctor when I get done recording. Oh, well, good luck with that, man. Well, uh, with with that being said, then, if I've got nothing and you've got nothing, what time is it? It's time to tap out.